Hello everybody, my name is Monkey, and today we'll be learning how to make this piston door. So to start this video off, we will go over materials list, and then we'll learn how to build the door itself, then we'll learn a modification to make it two blocks wide, then we will go over some quick notes about the door, and right after that we'll explain how it works. So to build this, you are going to need two gravity blocks. I'm using light blue concrete powder for this tutorial, but in the demonstration I use pink. It doesn't matter what color you choose. You'll need two sticky pistons, a piston, two hoppers, three redstone comparators, two repeaters, two redstone torches, a reserver, three redstone dust, ten building blocks, a piece of glass, or any other transparent block, two buttons, and a random item. Then I'm building the extension, you'll also need two additional gravity blocks, two more redstone, target block, three more building blocks, a sticky piston, and another regular piston. So to get started, you want to figure out where you want to make your door, and this spot works great for us, so we're going to stand inside it and break four blocks down like so. Then we're going to place a sticky piston right there with a piston on top of it. Then we're going to turn to our right, break this block, and replace it with a sticky piston facing downward. Facing downward, there we go. Now we're going to place our door blocks on top of this piston, and we're going to get our buttons out, place one on this side of this block, and on the other side, this is block right above where we just placed that piston. Now we're going to go down, and we're going to place a glass block on the face of this piston. doesn't matter if it's glass, it can be any transparent block. Then we're going to place another temporary block right there with an observer, oops, with an observer facing into it with a comparator on top. Now we're going to place a hopper, like so, with another hopper going into it right there. We're going to break this and replace it so it's redirected into the other hopper. Now you can put any item you want inside that hopper. Now we're going to place a block right there, right next to the observer with a repeater on top of it, facing away from the observer, set to four ticks. Now we need a block on these two sides of that repeater, a block next to this piston, and a block next to that piece of concrete powder. Then we'll place five blocks, like so. We're going to place a comparator facing into this block, and a comparator right here in the opposite direction. Then we're going to place redstone dust right here and there. We're going to place a torch right there, a torch right there, and then we're going to place a redstone repeater right here facing into this block, set to three ticks. And just like that, your door is done. So the addition is quite easy. With the button to our right, we're going to left the door, and we're going to break these blocks and go down here. Uh, down here, we're going to break this repeater and replace it right here, facing toward this torch. Again, set to three ticks. We're going to replace this torch with the block, then we're going to place the target block on top of it, and replace the torch right there. Now we're going to add a block right here, and right here. We're going to add a piece of redstone dust right there, and right there. Then we're going to place a stick piston right here next to the other one, and place the regular piston on top of that. To conclude, we're going to add the door blocks, and just like that, our two wide version is done. Okay, now we're on to some important notes about the door. First of all, we used concrete powder in our door. It can be any falling block, but if you use concrete powder, like I did, if it gets wet, it turns to concrete, the blocks will no longer fall, and this door will not work. So you have to make sure the door does not get wet. Our next important note is about these hoppers. If you have anything less than a block covering them, if you drop something on them, Hoppers will pick them up, and that could be potentially problematic because it could cause the door not to open. You may have noticed this when we demonstrated the door, and when you push it, this slide drops slightly faster than this side. So if that bothers you, you might want to stick with the one wide design. Apparently, this transparent block doesn't actually need to be transparent. I believe when I first made it, it did, but when I went over explaining redstone, I realized that it did not actually need to be transparent. So any block works there. Now that we've gone through those notes, let's talk about the redstone. The first thing I want to talk about is a fun, yet confusing topic called quasi-connectivity. It's the idea that a piston can be powered without knowing that it's powered. So I place a block right there. The piston is actually powered, but it doesn't think it's powered. Until I update it. Now it knows it's powered. So if I remove this block, it stays powered until I update it again. Same thing applies to this button. When I power it, and then put this block next to it, it updates the piston. But it's not powered anymore because the button depressed but it still is activated until I remove the block. That's why this hopper clock made it so important, because it is constantly updating the piston, so that way when we push the button, it knows to extend. So the next piece of the puzzle is this pulse extender. When you push a button, it's only active for one and a half seconds, and you'll notice once it deactivates, this piece stays on for a bit longer than that. And that's what we call a pulse extender. It takes the one pulse from this button and keeps it active, and that's what keeps the door open for longer than just the button press. Now that we've talked about both of those, let's look at the door. When you push the button, the piston is powered, it gets updated by this hopper clock. It pushes this block down, the observer detects it. 
which powers this repeater, then powers this block, which powers our pulse extender. That's what keeps the door open for longer. Now this is powering both of these torches, which turn off. The reason we have this torch and this repeater is because it allows this to stay up longer. And if that didn't happen, both the pistons would retract at the same time. And this piston, this bottom piston, cannot pull the first piston down. So we keep it active for a little bit longer with this repeater. So the first one comes down, and then the second one can pull it down. And then when this power is back on, this one pops up, and then this one pops up. That's why this block is important, because without it, this piston would not be powered. Well, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully I did a good job explaining the door to you. And if you have any questions about that, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I will do my best to answer them if out confusing you as much as possible. But thank you again for watching. Have a great day.